Casey Phillips here with Vice President of Player Personnel, John Spitek. And John, I know this is a crazy week for you guys. So tell us a little bit about what that entails for you and, and your department and what you guys try to get out of this. Yeah, it's a busy week. We've got a lot of players to visit with here, a lot of workouts to see. You know, we'll start some of the free agency um, talk with some of our own players about trying to get them back with free agency kind of rolling down on us. So kind of doing both college and pro right now. Um, you know, it certainly is a wonderful part of the, the process that we go through. It's, and it's really great this year to be back in Indy and be able to see these guys in person, to, to visit with them in person, to watch them work out in person. Um, so excited about the week that uh, we've had so far and, and where we're headed. Yeah, what did you learn last year not having it in person? Were there maybe things that you didn't even realize how much they meant to you guys until they were gone? Yeah, I think we learned we can do it without being it in person, but we don't prefer to do it that way. Um, you know, the, the personal interactions I think that we get with the players to visit with them, to to read their mannerisms, to shake their hands. I really enjoy that part of it. Um, I think you get more honesty out of them and then you can ask them some questions and develop a little bit of a relationship with them too. And, you know, Zoom has been a great way to, to kind of bridge that gap since we've lost that. But to me, like that's that's one of the biggest things that we take out of this every year. And, you know, we get a chance to sit down with 45 guys for about 18 minutes. But then our, our scouts and our coaches can do really all the other 324, well, 45 or 324 minus 45 um, and visit with them, too. And then it's, it's great to see them work out in person, too. You know, I mean, this isn't the end all be all here with the combine, but to see them move around, to see them in person, to watch them run 40s, to compete. Um, you know, it's really a solid week and we, we enjoy the whole process. And we talked about it's different in terms of the in-person versus virtual, but it's also very different in terms of maybe some of the needs on this roster that last year you were bringing everybody back and now there are a lot of unknowns with free agency and now we know that Ali Marpet just recently retired right before you guys came here. Mm -hmm. How much does it change the process at the combine or even free agency of what all you guys are trying to do when there is so much up in the air potentially for this team? Yeah, I think all we have to do is remember back to 2019 or 2020, really, following the 2019 season when, you know, we didn't have Tom and we, we had free agents. We had to make, you know, big moves to, to make this team better and get us over the hump. So, you know, last year was a unique year. We were able to bring everybody back. We didn't have a lot of um, attrition from the roster. We didn't uh, have the ability really or need to go out and look outside here. So I think all we really have to do is think about what we did every year before that and do it the way we have been doing it. You know, we've had successful drafts. We've had success finding free agents like Ryan Jensen and Shaq Barrett, you know, all before that. So, you know, we're not doom and gloom here by any means. We realize we have a big off season in front of us and, and it'll look and feel a lot different in 2022, but I'm confident in our guys, um, our scouting staff, our coaches to, to through this whole process, find the good players like, like we always have and expect that to continue. And when you look at this draft class coming up, what are some of the things that stand out to you as you look at the, the group as a whole for all the different rounds, maybe positions that seem really deep and just stuff that excites you guys when you're watching the tape of this class? Yeah, I think every year it kind of ebbs and flows a little bit about player, you know, positions where there's some depth, positions where there's not depth. You know, without going into too much detail, one of the things I do like about this draft is some of the places where we feel like maybe we need to make some moves. There is some depth at those positions. And so... You know, we've had a lot of success here getting starters in the second, third, and fourth rounds. If you look at the Chris Godwins, remember he came from the third round. Alex Kappa, uh, Dean, Jamel Dean, mm -hmm. Mike Edwards, Jordan Whitehead. Yeah. So, you know, again, uh, I believe, you know, any pick we have a chance to turn into a really good player. And I think when you look at this 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 draft, I know a lot of people are saying, like, maybe it's not the star power um, of the past. Well, that's fine with us. We're picking 27. Yeah. So I think 27 will get a great player. And then into the second and the third round, I think it's going to line up well with what we're looking for and I expect us to, to do well. Well, John, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it and good luck the rest of this week. I appreciate, appreciate you, Casey. Always great to be here with you.